In this free catch tutorial, we'll explore a workflow that lets you generate multiple variants of a single model simply by changing one dropdown linked to a spreadsheet. To demonstrate the power of this method, we'll create a simple model of a radius gauge, then use a draft array to produce a collection of gauges. Each array element can have its own dropdown, allowing you to generate multiple gauge sizes and 3D print them all in a single batch. So I hope you're enjoying these videos and let's have a look at this workflow. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. We've created a new document in FreeCAD's part design. We'll create a new body and a new sketch along the XY plane. Sketch is pretty simple. Using a rectangle, offer over the center point. we coincident, move our mouse out, create a simple rectangle. Right click to cancel the tool and then use the fillet and fill it off top edge. Right click to cancel. I set the radius of the fillet, click on the fillet, use the dimensioning tool, and we'll set that one to 10 millimeters. Next, we'll set the height on this side, 20 millimeters, and let's set the length as well, 30 millimeters. Close, take the sketch, and pad it one millimeter. Okay. Next, let's go over to the draft workbench and add some text. Making sure nothing selected, we use a shape string or drafting and shape from text. Let the top face, and you notice we have the snapping that's appeared. This is where the text is going to be placed. You can see we're snapping to all these points. The snapping is down the bottom here. If we long click on the drop down, we can see we have snap lock, snap endpoint, midpoint, etc. And these aren't grayed. If I click on the lock, they'll be grayed so the snapping is disabled. Click it again and it's enabled. So I'm just going to place it at this point here. We move it in a minute and the text is going to set this to XX point XX millimeters. The font we can select. This is where it's going to be your font directory, the Windows fonts, or if you're on Linux, it's going to be your font directory there. You also can import your own fonts from any true type font. We just need to set it. Let's cancel out. The height, I'm just going to set this for the time being 10 millimeters. And we hit OK. A text has been added. Obviously, it's too big. Come down to the size. Let's try three millimeters for the size. Perhaps a bit bigger, five. And also we change the placement, position. We just change the values to our desired position. Once we're happy, we can go back to the part design. Go over to the model and take the shape string and drop it inside the body. Now we can use the shape string with part design operations. Before I run that operation against the shape string, let's come down and look at the string itself. I want to link this up to our pad and the sketch radius here. We'll double click the radius and give it a name. I'm just going to call it rad and hit OK. Look to the left, we can see our constraint is now named. Let's close out. And now what we can do is take the shape string, come down to the text, look at the string, click on the field, which then shows a button on the end, allows to add an expression. We type in sketch. That's the sketch we created. When we click on it, we get constraints. We can type that in and you can see we've got rad here going to discard the millimeters. If we don't want that to discard, 
we can type in str at the beginning with open bracket and then close the bracket at the end. This will convert the length to a string. We'll get the 10 millimeters. Let's hit OK and click off. If we change the sketch and set the 10 millimeters, say 15 now, and hit OK, close out, our text will change. Now I'm going to take the text, click on the shape string, and run a pad operation. And we'll pad that by one millimeter and hit OK. So we've got some dynamic text now depending on the radius. That's the modeling part done. Let's save this. And now we can move on to our next stage, the spreadsheet itself. To create the spreadsheet, we'll use the spreadsheet workbench. Using the new spreadsheet icon or spreadsheet, new spreadsheet, spreadsheet is added to the left hand side. We can double click it, new tab will open, where we can start entering our values. For the time being, I'm just going to add two values. I'm going to keep this top row clear, and we'll see the reasons in a moment. So we add a label, first one I'm going to call radius five, hit the tab key, type in five, hit enter, come down to the next row and move across with the arrow keys. Or you can use the mouse pointer if you want. Next one is radius 10. Use the tab key to come across and type in 10. So we have two values. We'll enter more values in a moment to show you what happens when we create those links and start updating the spreadsheet. This cell has been kept clear. Now there's a reason for this. We're going to create a configuration table. Click on the first cell and right click and select configuration table. The cell range has been added as A1. The property is going to be an existing item in the tree view. Because we're going to create a link with the body and we want multiple instances of this body in different sizes, we use the body. So type in body and it will appear in the list. We want the dot. Now this property is not going to exist yet. I'm going to type in radius. The group is the group that's in the body. If I type in a group that doesn't exist, it will be created. Let's type in config. Let's hit OK. And what we'll see is that row two has been duplicated upwards into row one. And there's a reason for this. If we click on our body now, we can see we've got the new config group. And underneath we have the different radiuses here, radius five and radius 10. If I click radius 10, watch the top row. It changes. This means that we can place an alias against this field here or reference it directly in our sketches. I'm going to give this an alias of S sheet radius, just so I know where it's coming from. You can name it whatever you want. Once done, we can see the radius is taken. And now we can go back to our sketch. So at the moment we have our body and in the sketch, I'll double click on that, come to the radius, double click on the radius. We we'll use the button on the end, the expression editor and type in spreadsheet, we get the dot. And if we start typing S sheet, we get the radius. The result is 10. Let's hit enter and hit okay. And okay once more. You can see the radius is now under an expression. If I hit close and now come over to the body and drop down the radius on our body to five and click off, the model changes. We've set up the dynamic text and we've created a drop down through the configuration table to control this radius. But we still only have one body. In FreeCAD, there's something called the link make link take the body make sure it's selected and we can see all the properties for the body and we click on the make link you see that the body has been linked to here and you can see a tick if i click off hit refresh we've got a body icon with a small link icon if i click on that link and right click transform 
I can transform this out of the way so we can see we've got two now. We've got the body and the link. Let's hit OK. Now we've selected the link. We can see that the radius appears here. If I drop this down, let's pick five, both update. That's not the behavior we want. But if I look at the link and scroll to the top, if we look down, we should have something called link copy on change. At the moment, this is disabled. We drop this down and pick enabled. Now what happens is that when we select the link, link copy on change is enabled at the moment. The radius, if I change this, set it to 10, link copy on change becomes owned. Body now differs to the link. And if I change this again, you can see it's now independent of the body. So I could create another link by clicking on the body, creating a link and transforming it. Taking the new link, looking down for link copy on change, setting that to enabled and then changing the radius whatever we want. This is all well and good, but it's still laborious. We've still got to create another link each time we want to copy. But you may notice that links appear in such things as assemblies and also in draft arrays. We can use that to our advantage. I'm just going to highlight both these links and delete them. We may get an access violation. You do, you see this tick here, and we just delete that. Get rid of this one as well. So let's come over to the draft workbench. So in the draft, we can take the body, come up to modifications, array tools, and create an array. Let's switch the mode. So we've got an orthogonal array and the number of elements along the X and the Y I can change. Let's set both of these to four and just the one on the Z. The intervals. Let's set these to 40 along the X and along the Y have 40 as well. The Z, we've only got one, so that doesn't matter. Let's hit OK. We've got our array. At the moment, if we look at the array, we've only got one body in here, which we can change. This is not the behavior we want. If we come into the array and click on it and look down on the data tab, We've got a property called a span array. Let's set that to yes. Or well, in version one, that'll be a drop down. We can set that to true. Now we've got the individual arrays, which we can change, but we've still got the same problem. Now, if I take the array, we look towards the top, we have the link copy on change. We don't want to go through each of these, changing them individually. We can do them all at once. At the top, hold down the shift key, scroll to the end, and select the last one. We've got the link copy on change, which will enable and click off. Everything is set up, and now we can select an element. If I select the element from the 3D view, it doesn't actually select the element in the array. If we look, we got the pad, and though it's highlighted, we've got the pad here. And this is to do with the parent selection. If we select once, we're selecting the face. If we select again, we're actually selecting the pad. If I select again, we're selecting the parent of that, which is the element. You can see we've got the array I4 is here, and we can change the radius to radius five. Just this element has changed. If we had enough rows in our spreadsheet, we could assign each of these elements a different row, giving them a different size. We can see the radius has changed and the text has changed. We can update our spreadsheet, but we have to be mindful of something. I'll we'll come into the spreadsheet and double click on it. Let's add another radius, say radius 15. We'll set that to 15. On the left hand side, you would have seen a flicker happen. 
where each of those arrays have updated. Let's go back to our array and select the same one again. Select him three times and drop down the radius. We can see 15 doesn't appear. Let's try another one. And the 15 is here. When that happens, we need to refresh the data source. If I click on the one that's not appearing on here, array i4, right click and refresh configuration object. So now when I come down to the radius, we see that all three are here. The other thing is if we go to the spreadsheet and say deleted one of these, let's delete the last one, remove rows and hit refresh. Everything looks fine. But this one is still using that row. If we click three times, we see the radius 15 is still there. If we take the I4, right click and refresh, we get an error. And this is because it's still referencing the deleted row. Easy to solve. We take the I4, the radius, we just set that one to something that's already there. Everything has refreshed and we get no error. Once we've changed all the elements in our array, we can export the array itself. To do that, we select the array from the tree view and come up to File and Export. So that's it. That's how to set up a configuration table, create a simple radius gauge, use the draft workbench to create an array, and set up each of those elements to allow for a different configuration per element. Hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.